Have you had blessings this Congress? How did it go today in the south of the city? Jesus told his disciples, I was naked. You clothed me. I was hungry. You gave me to eat. I was a stranger. You took me in. I was a sick, and you came to see me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And, the, and these are the people that are on their way into heaven. And they said, when did we see you naked and we clothed you? When, did, when, when, when were you sick and we came to visit you or in prison? Or when were you a stranger and we took you in? When were you hungry and we fed you? And Jesus said, when you went to the south of the city, that's what it's like to serve me. People don't realize that serving God means you serve people made in his image. See, that's the Ten Commandments. You serve God. You serve people. You love God. You love people. This is systematic theology. You can find it throughout Scripture. They go hand in hand. Some people think that holiness means you sit at home every day and study your Bible, and that's it. No. Sit at home, study your Bible, but then you have to go out there. If someone's not being saved, that means you're not doing anything. I know it doesn't make you feel comfortable, but that's not why you came to Congress anyway. If you want to stay comfortable, stay home. For some of you, it's been shocking to come to Congress. This is not the music that you are accustomed to in your islands. I remember one day... I was speaking for the, the General Conference Youth Congress in Bangkok, in Thailand, and the delegations came in from all over the world. And the praise band was from Australia. <laughs> and let me say, for the first time in the history of the World Office of Youth Ministries, there was a praise band. Because there had always been song leaders with a piano and an organ, or maybe some guitars. But there had never been a band for a general conference youth congress. So there was scandal. Thousands of delegates were deeply shocked and offended to see a drum set on the stage. They were convinced that the devil had finally penetrated the church. Other thousands of delegates were saying, Finally, praise the Lord. There's something for us. And they were both in the same place worshiping. And of course, I had to preach. And after the program, after the first program, I went out in the hallway, and there were union presidents with their delegations of youth. Union presidents. These are the national leaders of the church with their two or 300 kids behind them. Pastor, we need to talk. They thought I had organized the program. And they said, in our country, we disfellowship anyone who plays this music. And now, the General Conference has a youth congress with this? And I shared with them, we have always ministered to the needs of your young people. And we don't minister to the needs of European, South African, Australian, New Zealander, and North American kids. They have gone hungry every time. It's time that they eat too. You must be patient. You must be mature. If you're from Jerusalem, and that's how things are done in Jerusalem, do not judge Rome. Paul said, when in Rome, I'm a Roman. And in Jerusalem, I'm a Pharisee. Both ministries are important. They're just two different cultures, you notice? Now, I'm from downtown Jerusalem myself. My favorite musician is Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. 
I actually took my children, my wife, to Austria to see the house where Mozart was born. I was so excited. <laughs> Mozart's music lowers blood pressure. I know you care. I took my kids into the house. This <laughs> is where, <laughs> watch, this, <laughs> this is where Mozart was born. My kids just said, awesome, let's go, we're hungry. <laughs> you see, my kids are from Rome, and their papa is from Jerusalem. You know what's interesting, coming from Jerusalem myself? God called me to work for Rome. So here we are in Rome. How does it feel? We must minister to the secular mind. You have more agnostics and atheists out on these streets who are the most lovely people, wonderful, personable people. They just don't believe in God anymore. And if there is a divinity, we can't describe it like Star Wars. There's the good side and the bad side of the force. May the force be with you, whatever that is. Foolish young Skywalker. I see you've watched. Watch. See, that's agnosticism. You know there's a divinity, but you, don't, you can't define it. Don't be impatient with youth leaders who have to minister in a world like this. They have to reach these kids for Jesus. That skateboard park across the street, did you get any of them to stop skating and pray with you? Somebody will say, as a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> Except for you. Those kids are not used to praying. They need friends who know Jesus. And they'll walk in here and be blessed by this music. Now, if I go to some of your islands, this will never work, huh? So we do what's necessary for your people, for your teenagers. Does this make sense? That is what Youth Congress is today in this world, this reality we live in. For those of you watching on the internet, for those of you watching on television, remember this. There is no one way to do ministry. We perform ministry in over 200 languages, cultures, kindreds, tongues, and people. There's no one way to do it. And when you say, well, the Bible says every culture looks at the same Bible verse with different eyes. That doesn't mean we do whatever we feel like doing, but the Holy Spirit is leading us. We must trust that God is leading His church first. You must believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Because, see, that's the power of the light. You know, we don't think of light too much, but light is very important. Are you aware that the further south you live, the darker it is? The longer the, the well, it's a longer day in the summer and a longer night in the winter until finally the sun doesn't rise for three months in the Antarctic in the winter, and it, and it doesn't set for three months in the summer. My uncle has been living in Anchorage, Alaska uh, since 1949. I have relatives and cousins up in Alaska. And, and um, the sun doesn't go down all summer long. Look, at, it's about to, wait, it's come back up again. <laughs> wait, it's, watch, watch. <laughs> so I went to preach for big camp in Anchorage. And, and I, I finished my sermon and it was 10 o'clock at night and the sun was right there. This is weird. Why doesn't the sun go down? Welcome, Pastor. It's summer in the Arctic. Oh, weird. And then it was starting to go down. And at 11.30 that night, the sun's right there, a friend said, get on my plane. I want to take you on a plane. And we landed on a glacier. There are thousands of mountains with glaciers. That's rivers of ice. And we landed on the ice. And when the ice is blue, that means the ice is thousands of years old. The light. But uh, Anchorage has one of the highest suicide rates in the winter. Why? Because the sun doesn't rise for three months. I was in Tromsø, Norway, up above the Arctic Circle near the North Pole. And, and the kids took me out to eat at one o'clock in the afternoon. And it was pitch dark and it hadn't been any sun for two and a half months. 
and I saw reindeer trotting through town. I thought reindeer were a cartoon. They're for real. <laughs> and Santa Claus was nowhere to be found. It was the middle of the night, but no, it was the middle of the afternoon. People commit suicide because your brain requires light. When you behold light, it releases certain chemicals from your brain that enter through here and have to get back here. And if you're missing those chemicals, there are people that are desperately depressed during the winter because it's so cloudy. Now, islanders have trouble understanding this. It's sunny every day, every day, forever and ever. Amen. But the rest of us... You have no idea, Islanders, what it's like for people in the South Island of New Zealand when it, the days are very short and suddenly there's a lot more darkness or the clouds just don't seem to go away every single day of the year. And you need light. Your body requires light. Are you aware that when you go out for a minimum of a half hour in the sun, did you go out today into the sun? Wasn't it a perfect day? And it hits your skin? When it hits your skin for up to half an hour, there are certain cholesterols just under the surface of your skin that are activated by the rays of the sun. They enter into your bloodstream and they find their way into your kidneys. Your kidneys then release a chemical that finds its way over to your pancreas right underneath your stomach. Your pancreas then produces vitamin D. So when you get half an hour of sunshine, your body releases a needed vitamin for your health. Light is so powerful that it can be abused as well. Now, islanders, once again, will not understand this. We're in the sun every day, all day. Amen. That's why we look so chocolate brown, huh? But other cultures, other races, much more fairer skin. If they don't use sunblock, and I understand the New Zealand sun can be quite ugly when it feels like it, you can be toasted red like that, just like that, because of the ultraviolet rays contained in light. And if you forget to use those sunscreen creams, you can get burned up to to second-degree burns with, with blisters and destruction of tissue. And if you ignore that year after year, it can turn into skin cancer. Light can kill you. Light is so powerful that if you focus it and focus it and focus it, and then there, it's a secret process, and you add this, and you subtract this, and you move the molecules like this, then that's called a laser beam of light. I've seen a laser weapon that doesn't exist, so you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't exist. In the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., where the, the United States War Department is, it, this weapon... There was a giant sheet of iron. It was this thick, pure iron, a wall of iron, this thick. It was over there. We had to put on goggles, and they took the weapon, and they just fired it. <laughs> just one blast for half a second, and it blew a hole this big through this much iron in half a second. There are weapons that have no nuclear, fission, plutonium. There are weapons now that only flash light. Light is so powerful that if you look at the sun without sunglasses, without sun protection, what happens? I want to look at the sun. It's so pretty. What happens? You will destroy your eyes. You will be blind. I know some friends who weld, they're welders. They, they melt all this metal stuff together. Put on your goggles. Oh, I've been doing this so long. You'll be blind soon. You have to use dark goggles because bright light will destroy your eyes. Light is 
power. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. How fast? 300,000 kilometers per second. That's seven times around the planet in one second. Wow, someone turned on their porch light. That's how fast it travels. Seven times around the planet in a single second. That is very fast. And light can go through most things. Light is so powerful that if we turn every light off in this auditorium and I light a single match, this tiny little dancing flame, you'll still be able to see enough to walk out of this auditorium with a tiny little light like this in a big dark room like this. Light can penetrate the darkness. In fact, darkness merely is, darkness is only the absence of light. Light. Now, when light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, that is fast. How many of you took physics in school? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, how many of you have not taken physics in school? Okay, thank you. And how many of you simply do not care? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Finally, I get to vote. I took physics, but we will not discuss my grade. <laughs> now I enjoy reading quantum physics for pleasure. Isn't it bizarre how God changes our brains and we mature and begin to grow up? Quantum physics, it's exciting stuff, you guys. And it was Albert Einstein who produced a theorem because there was, a, there was a relation that everyone knew. Physicists knew there was a relation between the energy and mass. I know you don't care what that sounds like. But I've decided from time to time to talk about deep things. And young people understand what I'm talking about. I've gone to third world countries where most of the audience has never attended a day of school in their life. And I discuss things like this and they understand it. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is here with us and leads us into all truth. E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light in a vacuum squared. That would be like that. I did it backwards too. Now, I know that still doesn't mean anything to some of you. But you need light to understand the power of light. And its relation to mass and energy. When something gets filled with power, you understand it by understanding E equals MC square. Don't worry, there will be no quiz on Monday. So you don't have to remember everything, but just remember this. A particle of light moves how fast? 300,000 kilometers per second. There it goes, there it goes. It is so tiny, it can go through a sheet. You can still hold a piece of paper and the light's going through it, right? Because it lights up the paper. It finally doesn't penetrate everything, but if you're on the outside, you can still measure light if you have the right equipment. Light particles travel at what speed? 300,000 kilometers per second. That, I, I would love to travel like that. On Star Wars and, and um, uh, what's that, C Captain Kirk? Um, Star Trek, they call it warp speed. When the ship all of a sudden, whoosh, that means it goes the speed of light. Okay, so movies try to mimic the 300,000 kilometers per second. It's impossible. Okay, but let's pretend that particle of light is a train. Can you see it? No, it's a regular big train. Can you see it? <laughs> I'm sitting here. It's a train. <laughs> no, it's a train. <laughs> but it's moving through 300 kilometers, 300,000 kilometers per, so it looks like Star Trek, <laughs> right? Okay, now, if you stand on the platform and watch the train go by <laughs> for 15 minutes, and then you're still staying on the platform, stay with me, I'm on the platform, here it comes, 
it flies 15 minutes back. So it went away for 15 minutes. It came back for 15 minutes. How many minutes have happened now? 30 minutes. Are you following me? I'm standing here. I watched the train go by. For 15 minutes, it was gone. It turned around. In 15 minutes, it's back. How many minutes? 30 minutes. Now someone says, climb in. Go on the train with us. Okay. Doors closed behind me. Hang on. And we're going at the speed of light for 15 minutes. And my friend waited on the platform. I'll, I'll be here when you get back. We went away for 15 minutes, but this time I'm inside the particle. I'm inside the train. And then we came back in 15 minutes. How many minutes? 30 minutes that I've been inside the train. But when I climb out of the train, guess how long my friend waited for me? 30 years. That is relativity. Inside the light. Now listen carefully. Inside the light, time stands still almost. Outside the light, time moves fast. That's why the Bible says, are you listening? Don't lose me. For God, a day can be a thousand years. And a thousand years can be a, a day. Because he is the light. He is inside the particle. He is light. That's why eternity means time shall be no more. You don't need a clock if you can have 10,000 years or a day be the same thing because you're in the light or outside the light. Follow me? Do you hear what I'm saying? Most of you are like, amen. Others, two or three of you, I still didn't get it. But your friends are going to clear it up for you, right? This is very important. Are you following me? Please, I'm sincerely asking, are you following this? For God, a day can be a thousand years and a thousand years can be a day. That is relativity. E equals MC squared. So when we eat from the tree of life, when we drink the water of life, what's going to happen? He himself will be our light, the Bible says. That's why Jesus said what? I am the light of the world he is the light and then he's if we are in him inside the particle we get to live forever some of you are still mystified especially with translation the translator is probably saying I'm sorry I can't <sighs> the particle is what it's a dot. It's, I know. I've been a translator for general conference sessions. And the speaker's going fast. And I'm going fast too. Entonces, como Jesús dijo, yes. And the speaker jumps. And I'm jumping in the booth too. And, and I'm, trans, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an instant translator. I'm on top of the translator. I'm a professional translator too. I know what you're going through, French speakers. To try to, wait, wait, he got caught. He did, uh, now I missed it. Our translator is, okay, wake her up because she's dying. I'm so sorry about that. I don't mean to confuse. The train is moving how fast? 300,000 kilometers per. When you're standing outside, time goes slow, like us today, one day at a time. If you're inside the train, you're like this for 50, 60 years, and finally you start going down. It, it, time almost stands still inside the particle of light. So inside the, the train, it's been 30 minutes, but outside the train, it's been 30 years. That is the theory of relativity. And you know what? I believe it. Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And you know where he shined? Just like Pastor Kara said when... When she sang that incredible song. Jesus shines light on the darkest places. A prostitute was caught in the very act. This little girl had been sexually abused because at a very young age she was orphaned. And she ended up on the streets. She was thrown at the feet of Jesus while he was preaching in front of the church on the steps of the temple. 
And with about a thousand witnesses, horrified witnesses, they brought a prostitute and threw her at the feet of Jesus. Why are we so shocked when we see a prostitute when there are a lot of men who made her that way? Why aren't we shocked by those men? Why does the woman get the horror of society? And the priest told Jesus, the law of Moses said that such should be stoned. Yes, the law of Moses said the man and the woman should be stoned, but they only brought the woman. How could she have been caught in the very act and they didn't bring the guy? Ladies, the world will continue to be unfair. Be strong and of a good courage. Your time has come. You're part of the effort. Jesus, instead of answering the priest, he starts writing graffiti on the sand. Because Jesus was from the east side. Can anything good come on Nazareth? Watch. Even the way they talk. I mean, I could, I'd love to hear Jesus talk because he was from the neighborhood, not the residential district. So where are you from? I'm from Nazareth. They say, orale, check it out. Well, you don't like it or como? I'll pray for you, eh? See, that Jesus was totally awesome because he grew up in the poorest of the neighborhoods, in the crime area of the city. He turns to this little girl and he says, where are those guys who are accusing you and condemning you? And she just said, there's, no, there's nobody. There's nobody. There's, there's nobody. I don't see anybody. There's nobody here. There's nobody. And Jesus says, shh, mijita. I don't condemn you either. The Prince of Peace, the, the King of Kings, the ruler of heaven, the reason why the choir of heaven sings turns to a prostitute and he says, I don't condemn you either. Go, sweetheart, go. Why don't a couple of you guys take her home? Go. Sin no more. There's only one way to have victory over sin. And that's hang out with Jesus Christ. But he couldn't publicly say, follow me, like he told all those men. Lech, acharai, come, follow me. No, he can't because she's a woman and it's improper. It was against the law. A young guy, a girl, a prostitute. He can't say, follow me. So he says, go, sin no more. In other words, he offers her a relationship unto salvation. And now Jesus turns to a shocked and stunned crowd and he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will not walk in darkness. It is that moment, that's the context of that statement from Jesus. He just forgave a girl from the streets. I am the light and I shine it on the darkest places. So don't look at sinners and think you're holy. Well, look at all those terrible people. Wait a second. That's somebody's son and daughter over there. They're no worse than you are. And you're no better than they are. The power of light is that it shines on all of us. Jesus is the light of the world. It's going to be cool when we go to heaven, huh? Because we won't have to say, how long have you been here? Oh, 300 million, 467,000, 532 days and 18 minutes and counting. No, you're going to just say, we just got here. Because a day can be a thousand years and a thousand years can be, you've got all the time in the world. Now think, now, now let me take that one more step forward. Ready? If for God a day is a, can be a thousand years, that means he has time for each one of us. Wow. See, that's, that's what's called the fourth dimension. Length, width, height. Those are three dimensions. What are the three dimensions? The length, the width, and the height. And relativity is the fourth dimension. A musical group in the 60s tried to add the fifth dimension, but that's another subject that only older adults know about. You don't know what I'm talking about. But ask your grandparents, the fifth dimension, oh, they were a, a group of singers, the fifth dimension. Anyway, that, when I speak at big camp to all these white-haired people, they love it. Oh, <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> they, uh, they totally get it because they were around then. Anyway. 
God can cross all the dimensions of time because he is the light. Are you with me? Translator, am I being kind to you? I'm sincere. I don't want our French speakers to miss this blessing tonight. Jesus is the light of the world. How fast does it go? 300,000 kilometers per second. That's power, isn't it? It's a weapon. It'll burn you. But it'll also bring out the best nutrients in your body. It'll help you see thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's a power in light. Now Jesus spent three and a half years talking about himself being the light. But then one day, quickly with me, look in Matthew chapter 5. Miren conmigo por favor en Mateo capítulo 5. Comenzando con el versículo 14. Notice with me beginning in verse 14. Matthew 5, verse 14. Did you notice I stepped off the platform a couple times? Did you wonder why I did that? That was to get your attention. Some of you were getting bored. But when I jumped over here, you said, oh, he jumped off the stage. Is that proper? I got gotcha. you. You sat up again. You took interest. So why did I do it? Why did I do it? To make sure you're listening to me, right? I move around. That's not proper, is it? Good. Now I have your attention again. I'm giving away my secrets. I want you to know what God gave me. Now, don't you go do it at home. And you jump off the platform and your pastor says, you do that again, we will disfellowship you. You think you're some Rojas Jr. or something? <laughs> if Pastor Rojas wants to make a fool of himself, you leave him alone. <laughs> the point is, when people are getting bored, get their attention again. That's all. Follow? I was talking about physics. Can everybody possibly be excited? <sighs> 300,000 kilometers. This sounds like a lecture. And some of you were showing your face like, I miss dinner too. I want to go for tea somewhere. Hurry. 300 kilo, thousand kilometers. Let's go. And then oh, he's jumping off the stage. That's not proper. Amen. What was he saying? I did it on purpose. And I, I made this story as I had you looking for the passage to give you time to find it. Follow? I'm sharing. The word of God. Now Jesus turns to his disciples in verse 14 and onward of chapter 5 of Matthew. Now, imagine, they've heard him say, I am the light of the world. And, and now he turns to his disciples and he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do we light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all who are in the house. So let your light shine among men, among people, that they will see your good works and they will glorify God because of what they see you do. Oh. Master? Yes, Peter. But you said you're the light of the world. Yes, now you are. And then John said, <clears throat> I think what he's trying to say, Master, is, you know, like... You know, like, you know. And then, and then Nathaniel says, Master, if we can just quantify what you're trying to say, because you've been saying you are the light of the world, and now you're saying we are the light of the world. This is highly illogical and improper for the developmental teaching that you've had over the last three and a half years. And Jesus says, you know what, you guys? You're the light of the world now. Doesn't it sound strange that Jesus has been calling himself the light and now he tells his disciples, okay, you be the light. I struggled with this for over 18 years. I've been studying this one thing to figure it out. And I finally figured it out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, I studied it for over 18 years. 
I figured it out in 1996. It was during the 1996 Olympic Games that came to Atlanta in the United States. The Olympic torch. You see, the Olympic torch is for every games every five years. And I grew up being told that you pass the torch to the next person, right? Pass the torch. And everyone says the same thing. And then I learned how it works. They have a special ceremony in the village of Olympia in Greece, just outside of Athens. And they have a shiny bowl that's so polished of metal on the inside that when the sun comes in, they put some material in there, it bursts into flames. So with the rays of the sun, they light a fire. And a, and a group of women in a special ceremony will stick a torch into that flame lit by the rays of the sun. Then they will light a small bowl, a cauldron, with that torch. And then the women will march respectfully and lay the cauldron, this bowl, with the fire on a platform. Then another woman would produce another torch, and she lights her torch with the fire that was lit by the rays of the sun in Olympia, Greece. And an Olympic torch runner approaches and puts his torch forward. And she, having lit her torch with that cauldron, that bowl of fire, lights his torch, and the runner begins to run. He runs throughout Greece to about, a, a, it, it's everybody runs about one kilometer or two, and they light another torch. And then that person runs, and he lights someone else's torch. And then they finally get to the airport, and they, and they, li they light three lanterns with the original flame lit by the rays of the sun in Olympia, Greece. And, and those three lanterns are put on three separate airplanes. And they are flown to the country that's going to host the Olympics. And when they arrive, they have three special campers, one with each of the lanterns. And, and because there are always protesters that knock down the Olympic runner and put out the fire for, in protest. We don't like the Olympics. <laughs> Amen. We're opposed to the Olympic Games. And so some runners are injured. And they're asked, can you still run? And some can't. They need ambulance. Three or four guys come out of the bush and knock you down on the street. They could break an arm, hurt, give you a head injury, catch you off guard and hit you the wrong way and break bones. And just to put out your torch, immediately another runner approaches or the same bloody runner gets back up with all these injuries. And they grab another torch and take an official flame from one of those campers and relight the torch with the official flame lit by the rays of the sun in Olympia, Greece. And they begin to run across the country that's going to host the games. And they would run one or two kilometers, some of them 10 kilometers, and then they light the next torch bearer who's waiting, and then that person runs, and then now she runs, and now that person runs, and, and finally the flame arrives and I saw it arrive in Atlanta in 1996. That's going to be 21 years ago in June. Some of you weren't even born yet. Oh, my. Pastor tells these ancient stories <laughs> from when Ellen White herself attended the Olympic Games. But others of you are saying, like, I remember those games. It's really, anyway, I, 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 we older people have issues, I know. But to me, it was just recent. I mean, it, it, it was only 21 years ago. I, I know I'm not going to convince you. So the flame arrives at the stadium for the opening ceremonies with over 100,000 people there. And uh, torch runners bring the flame down to the middle of the stadium. And, and then there's a special ceremony. And then they light the last torch bearer who then takes the light. And, and, and the flame goes right up and lights the gigantic cauldron of the, of the Olympic flame for the games. And it will burn throughout the entire week of the Olympic games. The torch bearers are not passing the torch. 
they are passing the light. So when Jesus said, you are the light of the world, he is the light. You are the torch bearer of the world. You're taking Jesus to shine everywhere. Today, you took your torches to the south of the city so that people might be enlightened. See, now we know that we are the light of the world. They'll see our great works. That means we are working with Jesus living in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's why the light is power, because it has the power to save. And, and look at quickly here in the book of John, chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 6. John chapter 1, verse 6. When Jesus came to be the Messiah, people didn't recognize him as the Savior of the world. They were waiting for a military general to kill the Romans and establish a throne in Jerusalem again. They had lost sight of the first coming of the Messiah. And some Adventists have lost sight of the second coming of the Messiah. We must be cautious that we don't become careless with truth. Jesus is coming again. Any questions? But too many people aren't sure anymore. Well, I know he's coming, but... See, there's the but statement. Remember, do not speak with the word but. Only use the word and. I know he's coming and what? But if you say but, you're really telling me you don't believe he's coming. Don't say but. Pastors, youth leaders, don't let your kids learn to say but. Teach them to say and. Okay, I told that to give you time to find it, huh? Verse 6. I love this verse. The first time I read this, it gave me a chill down my spine. It says here, there was a man sent from God. It doesn't say there was a man sent by God. He was sent from God. And his name was John. And we now know it was John the Baptist. Look what it says in verse 7. He came to be a witness, to bear witness of the light that all people through him might believe. First, you must believe. All things are possible to him that believes. But when Jesus arrived, nobody believed. So there was a man sent from God, and his name was John. He came to bear witness of the light. So that people might believe. Verse 8. He himself was not the light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light. Jesus. Which lights every person who comes into this world. So who is the light? Jesus. So was John the Baptist the light? No, he came to bear witness of the light so that people might believe. So you and I are the light of the world. We're out there bearing witness of the light. We are torch bearers for the heavenly Olympics. And we are taking the light of Jesus to places where it needs to go because there is darkness. People are dying in the sins. And now they have a, an opportunity for salvation. They can come to believe because they met you. You are the light of the world. Are you listening to me? You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. You can see the lights at night. Neither do you light a candle and put it under a basket, a bushel, has to be out on the candlesticks to light up the whole house. So let your light so shine in front of people that they will see the good things that you do and they will glorify God because it's not you that's shining, it's Jesus that's shining through you. The torchbearer. I learned it in the 1996 Olympics. 
And I want you to see this for yourself. I ask the crew, please, to run this. I want, now, I want you to think the, the flame is being lit in Olympia, Greece. And then they're going to carry it. asked to be a torchbearer for the 1996 Olympics. I couldn't figure out what it meant to be the light of the world until I bore the Olympic flame. I kept looking up at it and realizing that flame was lit by those young ladies you saw. That was the actual ceremony when they lit the flame. I'm but a torchbearer unworthy of such a symbol. We are torchbearers bearing the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Do you understand? And light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. If you're inside the light, it's 30 minutes. Outside the light, it's 30 years. If we are in Christ, eternity is going to be that. Time will be no more because we will live in the light. So we must now be like John. There was a man sent from God. It didn't say by God. When the prime minister 
sends people. He might give a military order, but it's the barracks that says the prime minister is given a command and military are now to deploy. That's sent by the prime minister. But when someone is sent from the prime minister, they are, they are a personal emissary of the prime minister. There were times that the White House sent something to happen to the governors who then to the 50 provinces, the 50 states, made it happen because it came by the White House. But there were times the president sent me. This was from the president. So there was a man sent from God, a personal emissary from God, and his name was John. He came to bear witness of the light. And who is God sending now? Us. There was a man sent from God. Now, I'm going to say there was a woman, a man sent from God, and their name was, and I want you to shout your name. Ready? I want to make sure it's translated well. I'm going to say there was a woman, a man sent from God, and their name was, and I want you to shout your name if God is sending you. Ready? There was a woman, a man sent from God, and their name was... They did not come to be the light. They came to bear witness of the light that others might believe. That is the power of light. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do you light a candle and cover it with a bushel. No, you put it on a candlestick so that everyone might see and believe in that house. So let the light of Jesus shine through you and let the people see the good things you do in Jesus' name and they will glorify God who is in heaven. Be a torchbearer. We don't pass the torch. We pass the light. One of the greatest mistakes in Olympian history was when they asked Jose Rojas to carry a torch. I was in shock. I told him, you've made a mistake. Well, are you Jose Rojas? Yes. Is this your personal identification number? Yes. Then you're the one. Why? I don't know. I'm just given the task to call you. You'll have to talk to some. I still don't know why I was picked. But I wasn't going to complain. <laughs> I mean, I don't look like an athlete. And, of course, I'm not. Uh, and you notice I was heavier. That was at least 10 kilos ago. And, and carrying a torch, which is quite heavy for a bit over a kilometer uphill was overwhelming for a minister. I mean, I was in shape. I mean, round is a shape. Uh, <laughs> amen. <laughs> anyway, that's when I finally solved my dilemma of understanding that we are the light of the world, when I carried the torch. I couldn't believe the change of life it would cause for me. And God wants to change your life. He wants you to bear him to the world. You going to do it? Well, why would God call me? I know what you're thinking. Why would the Olympic Committee call me? I don't know either. Why would God call you? I have no idea. All I know is that it's been prophesied that an army of warriors would rise in these last days and you will do something that no adult is capable of doing. You will preach a message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior. It has been prophesied. God told us that you would come. Take your torch and bear the light. This message is so holy tonight that I don't feel worthy to play my guitar. For the first time in over 35 years, I don't feel worthy to play my guitar. I want us to all sing. Put up the song, please. I'm going to challenge you in the name of Jesus. Do you want me to be a torch bearer for Jesus? Do you want to bear the light of Jesus to others in your island, in your community, in your village, in your city? Do you want to make a difference at your church? then take this light, this little light of mine. I want us to sing it a cappella. 
And while we're singing, I want you to come forward that we might close in prayer here together. Please translate that carefully. If you want to be a torch bearer for Jesus, if you want your torch to bear the light of Jesus to a world that is dying in sin, in darkness, this is your moment. God promised us that you would come. So as we sing together, come forward that we might pray together. Amen. This little light of mine. Hook up, hook up. I want to see your lights. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Come on up here. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come, bring your torch. Bring your torch, come. We're going to pray together. Bring your torch. You notice that each message gets tighter and tighter? It's going to be unbearable by the time this is over. <laughs> you will have no reason to give excuses before the presence of God Almighty. You came to, to Congress to be called by God himself. When you go home... Your family's going to ask, how did it go? And you're going to be struggling to describe what you saw. I, I, uh, um, I, I saw the face of God. Let it shine. This dark, lost world needs you now. There are only 18,000 Seventh-day Adventist pastors on planet Earth. For a planet of over 7 billion, for all intents and purposes, the Adventist pastor does not exist. If your torch gets tired, you can use the other one. <laughs> I notice some of you like this. <laughs> you can switch to the other torch. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? to harness your attention again. Did it work? You see, I'm giving away my secrets. I've been doing this for decades. I wish I could say I developed it. It's just looking back and see what the Holy Spirit did. I'm only testifying to what God has done. So when you go home, you must be able to say, I saw the face of God. He has called me. But sweetheart, how I have to hold up my torch and shine the light of Jesus for others. All of us can do that, right? That only requires first. You must believe all things are possible to them that believe. That's why we're in Congress. That God can light these torches before we go home. So this is going to get tighter. Tomorrow's message will be even <clears throat> Sabbath morning. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sabbath evening. Ah! <laughs> You're not on vacation, are you? Okay, you can switch torches again. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and go to the presence of God, Father in heaven. Thank you. We asked you to bless, and you did. You blessed our praise, you blessed our worship, you, you blessed every expression, you blessed the word. Thank you. Who are we that you should be mindful of us? 
So today we offer you our life, our torch. Fill this life, light this torch, and we will take it around the neighborhood. We will take it across the island. We will take it, some of us, around the world that others might believe. You declared that we are the light of the world. We want this light to shine so much before people that folks will see our good works and they will glorify you because the light is you. Thank you for that assurance and for blessing us for we have prayed in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Look at me, don't talk. You can put your torches down. Oh, somebody's arm just fell off plop. <laughs> It's lying on the floor as we speak. Why did I do that? To be at your attention before I give you your last statement. I'm giving away all my secrets. Whatever works for you, use it. If it doesn't work for you, learn the principle of it and let your personality shine with the principles that you're learning. Okay? This is Congress. This is not entertainment. We're not here for show. We are here in the name of Jesus. So now go. Tell someone what you have seen. This little light of mine. Power. Glory. I'm going to let it shine. Go in peace.